Jamal LaSalle's, Carl Darlow, and you're watching Newcastle Fans TV. So we're going to be talking about, um, obviously I'd like to give um, Tim Kroll and Ashraf Lazar a, a video on their own and just a bit of you know, recognition for what they've done, especially in particular Tim Kroll. We're going to begin um, with Ashraf Lazar, let's start with him shall we? So, a bit of a strange one wasn't it that he came last year, uh, signed a massive five year deal arriving from Playmo and you know, we all thought that, yes, Paul Dummett's got a bit of competition because we know that Haidara is always injured. And we thought, right, we've got this attacking left back. We've now got a bit of competition in the championship. And it just didn't work from it at all. I don't know what happened with, with Lazar. He just barely seen. He played under 10 games all season, including cup games. And Paul Dummett kept him out and Haidara out all season. So it's clearly that Rafa doesn't fancy Lazar at all clearly rates Paul Dummett because he's playing him Paul Dummett to be fair majority of the season last season was outstanding we'll, we'll see how he gets on the Premier League when he's back fully fit um, I've got no idea why it didn't work out for Ashraf Lazar you know he's he's a social media king what he likes to call himself and sees himself selfies left right and centre he's partying with well not partying hanging out with uh, Yedlin we've seen it when Yedlin was playing for the USA over the summer Lazar was hanging out with him while he was in Las Vegas Las Vegas and stuff but you know he's very active on social media and he's liked a few of our tweets ourselves as well about transfers and stuff so something going on behind the scenes and he was liking stuff where people were tweeting and stuff which is interesting you know he's gone to Benevento on loan with an option to buy and it's probably the right move if they were to buy him because I can't see a future for him because even if he has a good season in Serie A for a newcomer that's coming up will he really break it in the first first team next year I think he's probably out the door for good now although I know he's still got another four year left and when he comes back he'll have three year left which causes Newcastle a problem because we can't shift him out alone but hopefully Ben Nevento uh, sign, sign him up Interesting, well, let me know what you think about Lazar, but it's, we haven't got left-back cover, so to speak. Well, we have, because we've got Haidara, but with Haidara's injury problems, we've seen Jack Colback also named in that 25-man squad. He potentially could do a job as well for you. Just speaking of that 25-man squad as well, Henri Savé has been uh, named in there as well, so it's interesting. And Haidara, people who were thought would, wouldn't have a future at the club. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about Tim Krull, because Tim Krull's had, you know, what, over 11 years service at Newcastle. Um, I remember him when he made his debut against, funny enough, Palermo um, in that UEFA Cup tie. He um, made his debut as Man of the Match for 1 1 0. I remember it was on ITV2 when ITV used to have the coverage back then. Absolutely fantastic. And obviously, he's had numerous of good games, in particular the Spurs one springs to mind straight away where we were 1 1 0 with, with I think it was Lloyd Remy scored, I think. And Krull was outstanding. You know, he come through the ranks, come over from Holland. There's a bit of dispute over Newcastle because Newcastle had to go to court and pay a fee for Tim Krull. He moved up the ranks. He came as number th number three goalkeeper. Uh, Fraser fourth, that was fourth choice. Then obviously when was Solskjaer given a Man City, he moved up a level to second choice, and then he eventually dismantled Steve Harper and made the number one jersey his own. And he's got injury problems, and I think that's what's probably cost him his Newcastle career. We're going to read a statement out what he said about it, anyways. In a second, I think his injury problems have cost him a, a career because. He was loaned out with Ajax last year and he was still injured when he was loaned out. Newcastle made him sign a one-year extension, so hopefully we'll get a bit of money from this year when it comes back around now. Um, when it didn't work out with Ajax. He didn't. Play, he played seven reserve games, didn't make any first-team appearances for Ajax, and he struggled. And then Newcastle obviously had to pull the plug. He almost joined Watford in the January transfer window, but... You know, we shift him out on AZ. You know, they got the cup final there. He played 16 games. Looked back to himself. He's back in the Dutch squad. And then we thought, OK, there's a bit of competition going on over the summer. We've seen Matt Sells leave. And then we've seen Tim Krull. You know, we thought, oh, he's going to cut, he's going to threat Elliot and Darlow for that number one. And then he wasn't named in at all the squads in the pre-season. And then he looked, he's, he was training with the under-23s. And his future, his days look numbered. And it's, it is the right move from I feel from a little bit because when I read out the statement, you can feel that is is a sense of emotion attached to the club. Um, he just doesn't rate him, Rafa, for whatever reason. And it's, it's one of those sad situations where it's better for him to move on. And he'll go to Brighton under Chris Hutton, who he's worked with before in Newcastle. And he's 29 years of age. He needs to be playing games. And I think he'll do all right. Just hopefully it doesn't come back and haunt with. His statement, if you haven't seen it, what he put out on Twitter, this is what he said. To all the Geordies, I just want to say a massive thank you for your support over the last 11 years. You guys are the foundations of this club. It's been an amazing and unforgettable journey. I arrived at Newcastle as a 17-year-old boy 
and leaving as a man with too many memories to mention. Thank you for making me feel like an adopted Geordie. I'm proud and honoured to be served this great club. You will always be in my heart. Bye for now. So pulling at the heartstrings a little bit there, wasn't he? But best of luck for Tim Krull. Um, some people like him, some people don't like him. To be fair, if Tim Krull was still at the club, I think he's on level par with Elliot and Dolo. There's no one who stands out for me and says, right, he's number one by a clear distance. I think that all, all three of them are quite similar. But, you know, Tim Krull leaves. Fred Woodman looks like he's third choice goalkeeper now. And hopefully he'll play a few uh, EFL uh, check a trade trophy games whatever you want to call it he'll probably be staying at the club until January when he's loaned out and then down to Elliot and Darlow um, to make waves because we didn't really sign a goalkeeper but I want to know what you think of Tim Krull in particular um, Lazar let me know what you think on that but I think Tim Krull the one for me is it's it sounds it's it's a, it's a sad story that's what it is it's a sad sad story unfortunately but it's probably best for him like I mentioned to move on let me know what you think see you later bye bye